Now, we've all heard about digital twins over the last few years. It's the, the next phase in the infrastructure industry uh, that's gonna help us innovate and make uh, all the processes around the industry way more efficient. But there's a lot of abstract talk. What does this even mean, uh, literally on a ground level? So we look at some uh, a montage of demos of uh, things that we've done. By the way, my name is Roop. I've been working with Bentley Systems over the last few years in this area. And also I'm joined by my colleague, yeah, thanks, Roop. Uh, I'm Danny. I'm also with Bentley Systems, although I've only been here a little under a year now. And so, yeah, we've got some really cool things to show you. And uh, I think we jump right into it. Let's do it. So we'll start off with, um, where does it begin, Danny? Where does it begin? <sighs> it's a tough question, Roop. I, I think we have to start with the creation of a digital twin. The creation. You know, how do you get one in the, the first The genesis, place? yes. Yes. Uh, so uh, we have tried out many different ways uh, over uh, the last uh, couple of years especially, but the cleanest way or the quickest way to start up your digital twin is as simple as dragging and dropping your design files. We got MicroStation and Revit design files here and popping it into this uh, web portal in which uh, as soon as you do that, it kicks off what is called a synchronization process where we take data from these files, read them in and write them into uh, a cloud format of the I model, which prepares our digital twin. So this iModel, you can pretty much open it uh, in the browser and you can see over here uh, our uh, two models right next to each other. They've been geolocated quite nicely tucked in right by the road. So um, that's how you can pretty much start your digital twin, nice and clean. Yeah, no, that's amazing, Rube. Um It really was that easy. So I have a question though. What if I don't have the design files or what if it's an asset that exists in the real world? In but, the real you know, world, like it's like a construction already. And sure, what do you do with yeah. that? Well, I guess then you're out of luck. All right, <laughs> just pack it up and leave. I guess so. We're done here now. Uh, so in that case, uh, we have this thing called uh, context capture, where you can literally take any model, uh, any real world asset and take your iPhone out, record it. So in this case, I recorded my coffee table and I made what I call table city. And I was able to pull it directly into MicroStation by just pushing that video into the software. And from there, you can literally take it from MicroStation or any other reality data software and pull it into the digital twin. So um, yeah, that's another way to get started. Now, that's really you just, cool. just say it. I know, I know you want to say it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> now what? The coffee table is not enough, is it? I don't think so. You know, it's too small. Uh, what about something bigger, you know, like, like, a, actual, whole, like a building, like I don't a know, building. like something real world, not people just care a about. table, people, yeah. yeah. That's fair enough, fair enough. I feel like my table, first of all, okay, I won't, I won't go on the table, but um, it was, I'm sorry, it was a very special project to me. But uh, yes, you can use the same software for uh, uh, pretty much any assets. Over here, we took the city of Philadelphia and made a reality model out of that. And so you I, just went around and you like flew around with your iPhone? Yeah, exactly. That's what I like to do in my spare time is fly around cities with my iPhone. Now, <laughs> we use drones uh, in this case, okay. but uh, yes, we did have a very similar way of capturing the images, kind of going around and then on top to make sure we get all angles of the assets of the buildings and bam, we were able to push in the software and kind of really test the limits and we were able to create something that big. So, you know, doesn't get any bigger than a city unless you want a digital twin of an entire, right. I don't know, Con country, I don't know country, what you would do with yeah, that. The but, world, yeah. I mean, the world, the digital twin of the world. That'd be uh, cool. Yes, so that's how you can get started with the real world asset. Um, and then you can also use 2D is a very important space. Right, yeah, we've been looking at a whole bunch of 3D, but like. Yeah, so with 2D models, what you can do is uh, we have a simple thing where you can take drawing sheets of uh, models. In this case, we're using PNIDs for plant models, which is very common. And these schematics can be on paper usually. So what we can do is that's wasted data that is not pulled into the digital twin. We can literally scan those images, push them into our machine learning algorithm. And from there, we can generate these uh, pretty much uh, digital twin uh, ready models. We can, all the different elements inside the model are categorized using machine learning and they've been labeled correctly based on uh, the history of like what those symbols look like. So you can see, um, uh, there are different ways, and you can also get the tag information. So you can click on a particular tag of an element and zoom right into it, as you would a digital twin. So that's yeah. amazing. I mean, it must save so much time. You know, trying to do it all by hand must take forever compared to this. Yeah, absolutely. Just send it in and 
Yeah. You got it. Yeah, and before this, people would have to actually redesign stuff or port their data over, which is an expensive process. So that's how you get started. And you can use all these approaches or any single of these approaches together or separately to bring together your digital twin. So that's how it starts. Uh, and we are five minutes in. They say we only have 10 minutes to talk in this presentation. So we're going to try to get as much as we can in. Uh, so let's go. All right. What now? Yeah, what do we do with it now that we have it? So many things. Okay. You can do so many things. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is IoT. IoT is a pretty hot topic, which is taking other data sources and connecting to your digital twin to kind of build its value and show real-time data, monitor assets, uh, have some operations, intelligence on that. So IoT is big because uh, there's so many uh, assets out there that need some monitoring and sensors. So you can take, take these sensors and connect them directly to your digital twin. And then you can add markers, you can view the life status, you can do heat maps, uh, you can sh show historic data. So all this cool stuff. One real real world application of this was uh, we had this uh, amazing project with Microsoft and Doosan Heavy Industries. There's a wind farm. Um, uh, they, they have uh, multiple businesses, but they do wind farms as well. So they're innovating the field of wind farms by uh, uh, of renewable energy by creating digital twins out of their wind farms. So over here, we create a digital twin for them. And uh, we work with Microsoft to prepare uh, add IoT devices and get readings from it. And you can see the life status of the individual turbines to collect the status of the entire farm, how much power is produced. You can see the past data. You can also see future projections. So we're here, machine learning again is being used to look at the weather forecast for the next day. And from there, we generate and predict what uh, the power output could be. It's pretty cool to think about renewable energy and having some sense of reliability and expectation. Um, so that was a super fun project to work on, really enjoyed it. And uh, that's some of the ways you can kind of, you know, take your digital twin data and just overlay so much more value on top of it by connecting multiple data sources. I'm gonna take a breath because that was a lot of talking. And Danny, I'm gonna let you talk about IoT. What are your thoughts and what are your thoughts on your demo so far? Yeah, honestly, this is just fascinating that, you know, you can pull in all this different data, kind of do whatever you want with it, whatever needs to be done. And it's all in one place and you can really, the results are kind of stunning. And uh, it's really cool that you had a hand in that. One of the things that I had a hand in, actually back when I joined the company, uh, was a project called Dynamic Symbology. Mm -hmm. And so the goal was to, you know, take elements in the model and replace them with something a little more meaningful. Because a lot of the models we had used like abstract shapes, like circles, to represent like the electrical poles. Like point data, yeah. like small elements, yeah, that you can't find on a model. Exactly. Right, right. And so to kind of replace that with, you know, maybe an icon of the object in question, I, it drastically changes what the model looks right. like and makes it a lot more, you know, interactive. At first glance, you can kind of see what you need. Everything is accessible, yeah. like super accessible. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then you click on the marker and get information on that asset as well? Exactly, yeah. Wow, that's cool. That was your first project? It was my very first one. Man, my first project was a bunch of uh, EC SQL statements. Well, you know what, Rube? <laughs> it's all about perspective. Is it? Well, hey, more power to you. That's amazing that you were able to adapt and learn so quickly. Were there Was there a learning curve or were you able to kind of get you know into the platform and was it easy to break in? Yeah, you know, there's definitely a little bit of a learning curve there, but with all the resources and the tools and the support provided, it wasn't actually that hard, mm. you know, and anyone with a little bit of passion can easily do what I did. Yeah. And a little bit of developer, developer background is needed. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, just the basics of programming and web development. It'll take you a long way. JavaScript, TypeScript, yeah. Mm -hmm. Web development, I think, is a nice tool. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so that covers up uh, your first project, very impressive. Do you want to introduce this or should I, the next topic? So, you should introduce it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I will. So one of the most valuable things that you can get out of a digital twin are insights. That's uh, really what a lot of uh, engineers and entrepreneurs, uh, especially people who are involved in infrastructure projects are after, is uh, first of all, be able to combine all this data in one place, which we already showed you how, but also to get insights and kind of analyze it and do stuff with it, get the, at a glance, the key performance indicator of how your project is going and what you can do to kind of speed things up, save money, save time, and all that good stuff. You can validate the combined data using validation rules. You can uh, uh, use, um, you get reports, um, uh, generate uh, Power BI reports uh, to view at a glance the total cost and uh, other key performance indicators that you have. Uh, you can uh, detect clashes if elements kind of 
bump into each other as you're designing. When you have different designers kind of contribute to the same project, you can detect that stuff pretty quickly. You can um, uh, look into um, issues. You can track issues. So you can have essentially like the markers that Danny showed. You can have markers that kind of uh, show you all the issues of a project. You can tag issues and you can kind of get sync at the same view that an engineer on field would have for that particular issue. Look at the history and all the attachments, images. So all this uh, information you can get at the click of a button, you know, all in your palm. So palm of your hand. That's that the, the phrase that people use. I'm not from America, so I like to learn the new uh, phrases that you guys use. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right in the palm of your hand. Right in the palm of your hand. Yeah, there you go. So yes, you can get information right in the palm of your hand. Uh, I remember that one. So um, that's insights. And uh, one of the coolest things you can get in terms of insights is you can compare versions. You could have a model that has, uh, every time you push into your digital twin, into your iTwin, you're actually keeping track of the version history. And you can compare two versions, go back in time and see what changed in your model, what elements were added or were, which elements were changed. And it's super key because it lets you, lets you look at your model, the place it's in, and kind of backtrack and see you know, where it came from. And if any issues come up, you can always backtrack and see how it got to that place. Um, almost like uh, if the programmers out there who might be watching, it's like a diff of your data. You know, when you do a code diff based on different versions of your commits, you kind of do a diff of your design data and see kind of what changed, you know, and then uh, what, what was that. I think that's super cool. It blows my mind every time when I think about it. Uh, exactly, my head hurts. Because it's <laughs> blown so much thinking about it. But anyways, uh, last topic. Which one do you want to go with? I'll let you pick. All right. Uh, you know, VR is growing every day. Mm -hmm. I think that we should... They keep talking about the metaverse. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we got to... What kind of you know impact do digital twins have in that space? Uh, well, you could... Uh, uh... I just have so many metaverse jokes in my head right now that are going through that I want to share, but I'm probably not going to. I know you guys would love to hear, but uh, uh, so with VR, what you can do is uh, with digital twins, you can um, literally walk in your digital twin. You can walk inside, you can check it out. You can uh, see it in uh, virtual reality. Uh, so we have uh, worked with Omniverse and uh, and uh, we've used Unity and uh, game engines, other game engines as well. Like Unreal. Unreal game engine, that's right. To, um, to see how we can export data of a digital twin and be able to view it uh, within uh, virtual reality and such interfaces. And the results have been pretty mind boggling. You can literally walk inside a digital twin. You can use different tools. Uh, you can measure the distances between elements, like so much cool stuff you can do. But the way the analogy I like to use is, it's like uh, when you move into a new apartment, and you think about how you're going to kind of set up your rooms, you can kind of think about it in your head, but unless you've actually done it, you don't know if you like it or not. You don't know if, you know, it's, things are fit the correct way. So same thing with design, uh, with infrastructure, be it buildings, uh, floor plans, uh, a plan of big models, whatever it is, uh, you can design it, but you can't really truly experience it unless it's been constructed. So with the VR, you cannot do that. You can move ahead in time. You can see your model, in reality, navigate it in person, and then from there you can start making improvements in real time, and that is just amazing. That um, is amazing. It's one of the coolest things I've seen. Absolutely, very neat. Uh, we are way past time. I promised ten minutes. We are at fifteen. Time is a valuable asset, right? We all want to save time, and that's the that's what digital twins let you do is through these insights, through VR, through. Um, uh, uh, the, the version compare through IoT, we essentially are saving time and making things easy for engineers out there that are working on these projects, for entrepreneurs who want to innovate in this field. And we're all working on it together. We're still learning new things. We're new in the space uh, of digital twins. And we are innovating uh, continuously, constantly, and we would appreciate any thoughts, feedback that you have, any questions you might have, or any ideas or projects that you're working on. We'd love to hear about that as well. But ultimately, it's a community that we're working with and uh, we consider you a part of the community. And if there are other ways in which we can help you and serve you better, we would love to hear that as well. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, once again, my name is Roop. I'm Danny. And uh, we wish you the best on your engineering endeavors. And uh, we look forward to chatting with you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>